I want to thank you for being here tonight with us and thank you for sharing your loved ones with the world. It's drilled in every cop's head that someday someone out there will be willing to selfishly take a life of a fellow officer as we attempt to protect and serve our fellow man. Even still, we do the job as though it's a calling. It's an honor. We understand the risk associated and we accept this noble task. We run toward what other people run away from. In Isaiah 6, 8, God's word says, and I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, here am I, send me. That is pretty much the battle cry for every officer that I work with and have ever worked with, is here am I, send me. Law enforcement is a calling. It was my mission field when I was actively working on the streets and it continues to be my mission field today. And no matter what we call them, we can call them rookies, we can call them sergeant, we can call them patrol officers, we can call them deputy, we can call them trooper, we can call them mud, I'm sorry, uh, wildlife officers, we can call them anything in the world, and we do, but you all call them family, and that family has laid down their lives to protect their fellow man, and that is why we're here today. Uh, this place, uh, we're here in this place today to honor the memory of those brave men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice for our safety. I leave you with the words of Jesus Christ in John 15, 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his own life for his friends. Thank you again for being here, and I'll turn it over. If we bow for invitation, please. Father, we come to you this day thanking you for this beautiful day that you've given to us and for the travel mercies for those that are able to attend this evening. We thank you for the celebration we're able to do for our brothers and sisters that have given their life to, for, of service both for the communities, for the state, and for this great nation. We ask you to wrap your loving arms around those family members that are present with us this evening and with those that are unable to be here. We ask for your protective arms to protect those that are out there working the streets day and night all across this great country serving in servanthood. We ask at this time and that you bless the order that we do this service in and that all is brought to your honor and glory. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But at this time we'll have the presentation of the colors being brought in by the Sumter County Sheriff's Office. Would you please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Chaplain Jones. Permission to post colors. Post the colors, please. Detail. Left. Eight. Don't worry. Come on. We will now have the placement of the wreath by the Marion County Sheriff's Office. to 
thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Testament reading by Central Carolina at Lodge Number 31, President Kevin Sargent, who also happens to be our latest recipient of the state uh, award for member of the year. Trust in the Lord and do God or do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Psalms 37, 3 through 6. New Testament reading comes out of Luke 12, 22 through 32, using the English Standard Version. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor, what your, nor about your body, what you will put on it. For life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they, uh, they sow nor weep, they neither storehouse nor barn, yet the, yet the Lord feeds them. For how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life. If then you are not able to do more, as small as that thing, then you can be anxious about the rest. Consider the il uh, lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet they tell you, even Solomon in all his glory, not arrayed like, they, like one of these. But if God so clothe the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And, be, and do not seek what you are to eat or what you are to drink. Don't worry, for all nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows what you need of them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and those things will be added for you. Needless little flock, for this is your Father's good pleasure and give to your kingdom. It is now my honor to be able to represent or to uh, present to you the great governor of the state of South Carolina, the governor, Honorable Henry McMaster. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat> I am also honored to be here. And like many of you, I've been here before. I was here when we first erected this beautiful memorial. And there have been a lot of names pronounced from this spot since 15 years or so ago and now, and of course there will be more added. And the reason is because of the hearts and souls and bravery and integrity of our law officers, our first responders, our law officers, our military. They're all cut out of the same kind of cloth. And a few years ago I was at a meeting with the general who was in charge of the recruitment for the army in the country. And this general said to me that if were it not for quotas to spread the recruitment out around the country, he could fill the army's quota every year for men and women from five southern states. <laughs> also, you will remember four-star General Mark Clark, World War II, who was the president of the Citadel after that, said, and I quote, there's more patriotism per square inch 
in South Carolina than any place on the face of the earth. Well, that spirit and those, that fighting spirit, that determination, that loyalty, that patriotism that those men were referring to are in all of our law offices. Who else runs towards danger? Who else among us? We get up in the morning and try to look nice. Some of us have more luck than others. Put on a, I put on a tie usually, a shirt. No bulletproof vest, no firearm, no badge. And I don't expect to run into danger every day. Most people don't. But our law officers are just the opposite. That's precisely what they must expect every day when they go out. Why do they do it? It is a wonder. For years to come, we will gather at this day to memorialize those who gave their lives protecting us. They did it because of the way they lived, free men and women willing to risk their lives to protect and defend our rights as Americans. Those rights eloquently described in our Declaration of Independence years ago, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And as long as this blue line holds, and may God will that it hold forever, we will be free Americans. God bless these men and women. God bless South Carolina. God bless America. Good evening and thank you for being here tonight. I've got the honor of introducing our keynote speaker tonight, the Honorable James H. J. Lucas, who's the Speaker of the House for the South Carolina House of Representatives. I've known Jay for, for many years, and I'm not going to tell you any of the dirt stories until we go over here to the side. Uh, but Jay is a Gamecock. He has his bachelor's degree, master's degree, and law degree all from the University of South Carolina. Jay's an attorney in Hartsville, South Carolina, and as an attorney, he was also the county attorney for Darlington County, and more importantly, in my view, the city judge for the city of Hartsville, where he got to learn from our side a little bit about some of the people that we have to deal with. Jay was elected to the House of Representatives in 1999, and in 2010, was selected as a speaker pro tem by his colleagues. He's been serving as a Speaker of the House since 2014. I'm not going to go into the many awards Jay has earned because he's earned every one of them and he's done everything we have asked him to do and is a friend to law enforcement. No further ado, I would like to introduce the Speaker of the South Carolina House of Representatives, Jay Lucas. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for allowing me the privilege of joining you this beautiful Friday evening for a most patriotic and solemn occasion. I want to give a special thank you to the South Carolina chapter of the Fraternal Order of the Police. Uh, I've had the great honor of working with Terry Ganey, Terry Anderson, and many individuals in the order. And I can tell you these are men of the highest integrity. I want to also acknowledge my very, very good friend, best governor in the United States, Governor Henry Dargan McMaster, who ceaselessly is a champion for law enforcement in our great state. But most importantly, I want to welcome and thank the families and loved ones of the special men and women we are here to honor tonight. It's no secret, as all of you know, that we live certainly in unsettling and uncertain times. Yet in these uncertain times, it gives me peace knowing that there are so many heroes among us who fight for us every single day. You know, a true law enforcement officer fights not because he hates what's in front of him, 
but because he loves who stands behind him. I always love it when I get to read that quote, certainly an apt description of a law enforcement officer. The author Raymond Chandler, who was a flawed individual, he wrote detective novels, and he, he stated one time, I thought, a very eloquent quote about a law enforcement officer. And he said, down these mean streets, a man must go who is not himself mean and who is neither tarnished nor afraid. The men and women in our state and country who wake up each day and put on this uniform are not afraid, never tarnished, and are the best among us. You know, the Fraternal Order's motto, Juice Fidus Libertatum, translates to law is a safeguard of freedom. That statement rings true. The men and women who wear the uniform are truly the first line of defense to our most precious and sacred freedoms in our state, the great state of South Carolina, and our great nation. That truth is symbolized by the thin blue line that I'm currently standing on. The line separates law and order from anarchy, from chaos, from crime, and from evil. One of the most quoted presidents, and I think one of the greatest American presidents once said, and Ronald Reagan, who was our 40th president, once said, evil, if power, evil is powerless if the good are unafraid. And I'm honored tonight to be standing with so many individuals who I consider good and unafraid. Our law enforcement officers defend good over evil each and every day when they wake up and courageously put themselves in harm's way. They steadfastly serve their communities. They work tirelessly to defend we the people. Most importantly, some give the ultimate sacrifice in the most selfless act of service to others. Tonight, we are here on the grounds of our beautiful state capitol to pay tribute to 25 special men and women who bravely gave their lives in the line of duty. May we honor and remember them, their bravery, their selflessness, and more importantly, their sacrifice for all of South Carolina. No name of a fallen hero should ever be forgotten. Never. And this memorial stands as a permanent testament to their lives, and more importantly, their legacies that they leave for all of us. As these names are forever engraved in stone here, may we also carry these heroes in our hearts like I know that their families, loved ones, and friends continue to do. It takes a truly special kind of person to give one's life and sacrifice to their community, and that is why our law enforcement community will always, always have the full support of myself, Governor Henry Dargan McMaster, and the great state of South Carolina. I want to close this evening with a small prayer. May God hold and keep these heroes. May God comfort and heal their families and loved ones. And may God truly bless our law enforcement community in the United States of America. Thank you.
time we're going to begin to start with our uh, roll call of heroes. I'd like to welcome the COPS president, currently Nicole Brendel. Uh, at this time we're going to ask to turn on your candles. Just a little button on the bottom of them. As the names are called, you're going to see their names written in blue laser across the street on the top of the building. Private First Class Michael Sean Latou, Marion County Sheriff's Office, December 17, 2019. Elias Grantham, Marion County Sheriff's Office, July 7th, 1864. William P. Campbell, Marion County Sheriff's Office, November 17th, 1864. William B. Page, Marion County Sheriff's Office, December 12th, 1873. James Blackwell, Edgefield Constable, November 6, 1886. James Alexander Campbell, Chesterfield County Sheriff's Office, November 23, 1885. Arthur N. Turner, Blacksburg Police Department, November 23rd, 1885. Daniel A. Smith, Union County Sheriff's Office, January 6th, 1871. E.C. Burpee, Midway Police Department, September 7th, 1891. William A. Meggs, Florence the Police Department, June 16th, 1892. Philip Simon Poston, Johnsonville Constable, December 23rd, 1897. John Lee Neese, Swansea Town Marshal, December 24th, 
1902. Hampton Smith, Hampton Police Department, December 7th, 1905. Raglan R. Burnson, Dillon Constable, February 23rd, 1908. John Dozer Altman, Constable, Dispensary, Ravenel. July, July 4th, 1909. Edgar Cleveland, Cleveland Waltrip, Greenville County Sheriff's Office, June 25th, 1910. Samuel H. Boyer, Southern Railway, Columbia, January 28th, 1910. David C. Dickery, Fairfield County Constable, March 5th, 1910. Arthur M. Bateman, Sumter County Rural Police, May 4th, 1913. Fred H. Edenfield, Allendale Police Department, May 5th, 1913. Tobias R. Penninger, York Constable, September 30th, 1918. Jefferson Davis Wiggins, Uteville Police Department, April 12th, 1920. Miles F. Nixon, Furman Police Department, December 1st, 1928. Fern S. Thompson, Charleston Police Department, September 9th, 1958. Samuel E. Yates, Turboville Police Department, January 22nd, 1961. Before I do the benediction, I'd like to make some thank yous. First of all, I didn't introduce myself in the beginning of that. I'm uh, Dale Jones. I'm the state president, or excuse me, the state uh, chaplain and the local president for the Midlands Lodge Fraternal Order of Police. Uh, I'd like to thank, especially in that, uh, 
Governor McMaster and Speaker of the House, um, Lee Lucas. Then I, there's no way I could do this without my, the, the help of the committees and, and other workers that have been out there that from the state uh, board as well as from other members of the association. Um, the, the 24 additional names that were added didn't just come automatically and stuff that somebody just popped up and said, hey, these names to be added. Uh, Mike Loftus and his heart for this memorial uh, and some of the things that he's worked with and gotten with the, uh, the Hall of Fame and that with Jim McCauley and what they've been able to research and be able to get these names confirmed to get them back to the agencies in order to be able to do. They're the ones that deserve the, the thanks for being able to get this stuff done to be able to get these names out here. And I greatly appreciate their assistance in this. Uh, again, want to thank cops for everything that they do and that for the families and that the, on an everyday basis. Uh, thank the Sumter County Sheriff's Office for being uh, our honorary honor guard this evening, as well as uh, Jim uh, always coming in, Ryan and that our bagpipe player. Uh, Danny, beautiful music again. We appreciate that uh, you being here and being part of it. Uh, every year, uh, in the last five or six years, we've had the names being done in the laser, and that's the thanks of this gentleman and his team come voluntarily and do this work for us, set up the lights, do the sound, and all this and that on a volunteer basis. And that's Jim Jackson. I'd like to appreciate them. Um, the North Carolina Baptist Church provides us with the uh, the flags of the military services that we use each year, um, and the florist and the loach florist. Our benediction, this evening, let, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And this time we'll have the retirement of the colors. May our Lord give each of you safe travel mercies as you depart this service. We are dismissed. 